But if a light source is moving away from you, it will show up on the red side of the light spectrum, meaning they're getting stretched out, the light waves. Now, red shifts are used to describe the expansion of the universe, the distance a galaxy is away from us. Most everything in this universe we observe is red shifted, giving the idea that everything is moving away from us, hence supporting the Big Bang model of some large expansion or explosion about 13 and a half billion years ago. That is the Big Bang model. And based on that idea of redshift, the Big Bang model seems to be true. Now, let's take a look at this redshift interpretation. It's an interpretation. Redshift is the distance a galaxy is away from us. So if we were to see a galaxy out a particular distance, redshift it, Let's say galaxy one here, it would show up on the red shift, red side of the light spectrum. But if there was a second galaxy and it was further away, it would show out further on the red side of the spectrum. And if there was a third galaxy that was even further away from that, it would show up further out on the red side of the light spectrum. So the distance a galaxy is away from us, the further it will show on the red side. Now here's something. One of the keys to the Big Bang model is that this universe is homogeneous. Homogeneous, meaning everywhere in the universe, it looks the same. There's no special place at all in this universe. Everywhere we look out there in the universe, it should appear the same. So based on that idea of the Big Bang, when we look at these galaxies, we see redshift lines all up and down that redshift. At every interval, we see galaxies all up and down that redshift. That's what we should see based on the Big Bang model, a homogeneous universe with no center, redshift everywhere up and down there. But in fact, that is not what we observe. What we observe is these redshifts coming at distinct quanta, distinct intervals. And they happen to be at intervals of one million light years. Something is not right with the Big Bang model. The Big Bang model says we should have redshifts everywhere, homogeneous universe, but we're not. We see, for instance, we look at our Milky Way galaxy. We look out one million light years, we see redshifts, but nothing in between. We look out another two million light years, we see another redshift, but nothing between one million and two million. The Big Bang model says we should see them all the way through one to two million. We look out, we see them again at three million light years. In other words, what we are observing out there is what appears to be concentric circles around our galaxy. Distinct quanta. The Big Bang does not predict that at all. The Big Bang gets, says we should have a homogeneous universe. Everywhere we look, everything should be the same, all up and down that red side. So has this been confirmed, though? Because this could be devastating to the Big Bang model. Has this been confirmed? Well, W.G. Tift and W.J. Koch right in the Astrophysical Journal in 1984, made this statement. There is now very firm evidence that redshifts of galaxies are quantized. We knew all the way back in 1984 that they were quantized. But since that went against the norm, that went against the Big Bang model, there was so much skepticism that it was completely ignored. Now, neither one of these astronomers are creationists. They're both evolutionists that found this. Russell Humphreys, PhD in physics, writes this. Astronomers have confirmed that numerical values of galaxy redshifts are quantized, tending to fall into distinct groups. That would mean the galaxies tend to be grouped into conceptual spherical shells concentric around our home galaxy. That was 2002. Has this been confirmed? Yes, it has. Here's several more astronomers writing in 1997, Journal of Astrophysics and Astronomy. The redshift distribution has been found to be strongly quantized in galactocentric frame of reference. The phenomena is easily seen by eye and apparently cannot be ascribed to statistical artifacts, selection procedures, or flawed reduction techniques. In other words, it has been confirmed. Quantized redshifts have been confirmed. We see the concentric circles around our galaxy. It's been so confirmed now, the Hubble telescope has confirmed it out to a billion light years. Now, what does this mean to the Big Bang? 
Well, this could be devastating to the Big Bang because it completely goes against the predictions of the Big Bang. So what does it mean? Well, to understand what it means to the Big Bang, we need to go back and understand something about the Copernican principle. Anybody remember Copernicus? All the way back in 1540s, Copernicus made a heretical statement. He said, the Earth is not the center of the universe. Whoa! That was being labeled a heretic back then for doing that. He said, we're no special place in the universe. We're not the center. Before that, everybody believed we're the center. But the Big Bang cosmology is based upon this Copernican principle. Let's read what they have to say. The Copernican or cosmological principle is a key ingredient to modern cosmology, which states that we are in no preferred or special place in the universe. The conclusion from this is that the universe appears the same in all directions when viewed from any point in space. In other words, we have this homogeneous universe. No matter where we're located in the universe, it should appear to be the same. Well, here's what the evolutionists have to say about this. Stephen Hawking and George Ellis write in 1973, in the earliest cosmologies, man placed himself in a commanding position at the center of the universe. Since the time of Copernicus, we have been steadily demoted to a medium-sized planet going around a medium-sized star on the outer edge of a fairly average galaxy, which is itself simply one of a group of galaxies. Doesn't that make you feel very special now? You're in no preferred place anywhere in the universe. You're not even a preferred species. An astrophysicist writes this in 1993 out of Nature. The Copernican Revolution taught us that it was a mistake to assume without sufficient reason that we occupy a privileged position in the universe. Darwin showed that in terms of origin, we are not privileged above other species. Our position around an ordinary star in an ordinary galaxy in an ordinary supercluster continues to look less and less special. And he continues, the idea that we are not located in a special spatial location, get this now, has been crucial in cosmology, leading directly to the Big Bang Theory. In astronomy, the Copernican principle works because of all the places for intelligent observers to be. There are, by definition, only a few special places and many non-special places. So you're likely to be in a non-special place. In other words, the Big Bang model is dependent upon we are not in a special place, and this universe is homogeneous. That is the core, that is a core foundation for the Big Bang. So, from the evolution perspective, we are a non-special species living in a non-special place in the universe. We are nothing more than an accident of chance occurrences. But does the evidence really support this idea? And the answer is no. The observable information clearly contradicts the Big Bang model. Russell Humphreys, again, in his book, Starlight and Time, makes this statement. The quantized distribution of galactic redshifts observed by various astronomers seems to contradict the Copernican principle and all cosmologies founded upon it, including the Big Bang. The only way we could be observing the only way we know if we could be observing these concentric circles of redshifts around our galaxy is that our galaxy has to be within one million light years of the center of this universe. Now, I'm not talking geocentricity there, which says the Earth is the center. We're talking galactic centricity, that our galaxy is near the center of the universe. It could be moving, but it's near the center. What does that say? It says the Big Bang, the whole foundation for the Big Bang, is false. The observable evidence clearly supports today it is false. Halt Narp, another astronomer and evolutionist, very popular evolutionist, very popular astronomer, says this. The fact that measured values of redshifts do not vary continuously but come in steps, mean quantized steps, Certain perverted values is so unexpected that conventional astronomy has never been able to accept it, in spite of the overwhelming observational evidence. What he's saying there is this, that despite all the evidence against the Big Bang, they refuse to accept it. 
In other words, what we said before is the evidence does not matter. All that matters is that we believe in evolution. And that is what our students are being subjected to throughout this country in the school system. They're being subjected to a belief system, not being taught the science. So let's look at a summary of our evidences. Evidence appears to support the Big Bang only when contradictions are ignored. The Big Bang model has been considered.